So in the last lesson, what we did was we found the work done by a variable force where force related to the displacement in a linear fashion. So we wrote f was equal to minus kx and it was a simple function of x. Now let us say we are asked to find work done by a force which is related to its displacement in a slightly more complicated fashion. So, or we can say that f, let us say, is equal to x squared plus 2x or we could say that f is equal to x squared plus root x. So the point I'm making is the force is a more complicated function of displacement. So let us say f is equal to fx. And if you're asked to find what is the work done by this force when displacement of the particle is from an initial position xi to a final position xf. So let's see what a force displacement graph would look like for such a force. So let us say this is the force displacement graph. So for all x values, you have corresponding force values so that the graph curves something like this. For each changing x value, you get corresponding f value. Now to find the work done by this variable force, let's consider a small displacement x somewhere in the middle of this journey from xi to xf. This is that small displacement delta x. So this is delta x. Now we see what is the force acting on the particle when it is doing this small journey delta x. So you can see that the force is actually changing from here to here. But we'll assume since the delta x is such a small value, we can take some force value in between. So let us say this is that force value. So we can find what is the corresponding force by dropping a line like this. So let us say this force is Fj. Then we can say that the work done by this force Fj to complete the small journey delta x is delta w is equal to Fj multiplied by the displacement delta x. In another way, you can say that if you make a rectangle with height fj and breadth delta x, the area of that rectangle will give you the delta work. So let's go ahead and make that rectangle. So that rectangle would probably look something like this. This is your force and this would be your effective rectangle. So if we can make several such rectangles, so let's say for the next delta x, you would have this as the rectangle. So this would give you the work done for this delta x. Likewise, you'll find that this is the work done for this delta x. Likewise, this is the work done for this delta x. And likewise, we can move to the left and make similar rectangles. So if we sum up all these rectangles, we should get the various delta w's and the summation of this should give you the total work done. So we can write that the total work done is equal to sigma of all delta w's, which in turn should equal to sigma of all fj into delta x values, which might range from xi to x final. But now, while this seems to be a fairly accurate answer, but it's, it's not very accurate because you can see that you would have wanted to actually take this area. This would have represented, this would have represented the exact work done. But what's happening is there is this area, unwanted area, which is getting added over here. This unwanted area getting added over here. Likewise, this is the extra area getting added here. While in this bar, you, you would have wanted to include this area, but it is not included. But you would observe that if you keep reducing the thickness of delta x, if it keeps reducing, the accuracy of the area under the curve will keep increasing. So what we say is that as the limit of delta x tends to zero, so we write it in this fashion, limit of delta x tending to zero, that is it's becoming very small, sigma fj, delta x actually equals integral of fx dx as x changes from 
xi to x final and this is the work done so in formula terms we can write that the work done by a variable force is equal to the integral of that function with limits applied between the initial position and the final position now let us also go ahead and do a bit of assessment of work done if the force was a three-dimensional force and the particle was also moving in three dimension so let's say the three-dimensional force was defined as f is equal to f x i and i'm not putting the cap over here plus f y j with j i and z being the unit vectors plus f z k and let us say the initial coordinates of the position vector r i was equal to x i y i and z i and coordinates of let's say the final position vector r final was equal to x final y final and z final then what is the work done by this force as the position vector changes from ri to rf so delta work done dw for to dr displacement is equal to f dot dr now if dr is equal to let us say dx i plus dy j plus dz k what you'll get is dw is equal to f x dx plus f y dy plus f z dz and if you integrate dw from let us say r i to r f what you will get is we'll have to put integral on both sides what you'll get is this would be x i to x f this would be y i to y j i'm sorry y f and this would be z initial to z final so what you'll get is that the total work done left side becomes total work done is equal to the integral on the right hand side